Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel with me, Jay Richardson. I'll be your phonics instructor today. I've been given a lot of requests and messages from people all over asking about Jolly Phonics. So we're gonna do a little bit about that and a little bit of an overview of different phonic types. Today is a um, very quickly put together presentation. So you might hear some sounds around. I mean, I'm in a very busy office today. And do help me out by sharing, liking, subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Facebook, by the way, uh, Jay Richardson, E-A-C, E-A-C School. Um, and there's another Facebook page, E-A-C by Jay. And also, if you have any requests, comments, please do make a, make a note in the boxes below. I do reply to all comments, so let's do our best, okay? Let's get it on. So these are the screenshots of my Facebook pages you can find me on and I hope to see you there and we'll chat there with any questions you may have. So there, there seems to be a big reflection in my glasses from the screen. Sorry about that. Okay, like I said, today's not a professional video, but we'll do our best for you guys. All right. So first things first, this is very important to me. This is about why we do anything really. Education. It's not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. This is from Einstein. And... Um, this is about, for me, with phonics, this is about giving students, uh, whether you're children, young learners or adults, the skills needed to go ahead and develop yourself. You don't need to wait for a teacher to come on in and tell you the next piece of information. With phonics, you're basically training yourself to learn independently, which is why I love it so much. All right. So let's have a quick chat. This is a review of stuff I've done in a bunch of videos. What is a letter? This is about phonics, right? Uh, a letter is a picture. Yeah, like the, the letter, the, the, the letter A is a picture. That picture has a sound, ah. And that sound, that letter's a name, A. Yeah, so you'd have a picture. You could even pop it up I'm using Zoom here. So what I mean is we have this picture here. And that picture has a name. That's the picture. The name of that letter is A. How would you write that in English? A, something like this. And there's a sound. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. The, the name is not important for phonics. Okay, you only use names of letters when you're spelling for other people to hear. How do you spell the word cat? C A T. How do you read the word cat? K at. K at. Difference. Okay, I've, I've, this is a review, so I'm not going to spend too long on this. Now, what I do want to talk about today is give you guys a brief overview. This is, it's mainly for parents, this, I think, and young teachers that are new to phonics. But I'm getting a lot of messages from parents all over Asia, um, maybe migrant parents that are living in England, but they're not from England. Uh, I'm getting a lot from India, Pakistan, um, Bangladesh, all over the United Arab Emirates. Uh, if you're one of those people, this video is for you. I remember I've been chatting with a few people. The two main types are synthetic and analytical. Again, this is a review done this in another video but maybe this is your first time seeing my content so just a quick review synthetic and analytical synthetic is where you synthesize the sounds of the letters okay analytical is where you kind of put them together and you analyze how the language is constructed and that has often a schwa sound in it now what i mean by that the synthetic has a pure sound so this picture don't forget picture sound name has a name s but we're not worried about that the sound of this picture is s, s. the sound of that picture in analytical is s s the next letter synthetically t t t analytically t t d d d d d d d with these harder consonants, there is a small schwa sound in there. I get a lot of um, a lot of comments from people saying, you added a schwa sound. I know, yeah, I'm, I'm, there, there are two different types. And you can choose. One's easier to teach, one's more effective. I am a fan of synthetic, and that's what we're doing today. We're going to look at synthetic phonics in the style of Jolly Phonics. I am not a Jolly Phonics instructor. I just have used Jolly Phonics for 15 years or so, and I've taken their courses with some professional trainers, but I'm not a paid Jolly Phonics representative. So don't 
and don't, don't, don't misunderstand what I'm doing. I'm just trying to help you. Before we move on to Jolly Phonics, it's probably a good idea for me to give you an overview of analytical stuff, all right? Just so you understand the difference, because the more knowledge you have, the better you're going to be at your job or your task as a parent. Basically, uh, analytical phonics, uh, which is also mainly like the, the Montessori stuff you've probably seen. It's very popular. It's been around for many, many years, since the 70s. I think. And basically, there are five very simple steps to go through in order to complete synthetic um, analytical phonics. All right, You can't really get out of this order. This is the way you have to do it. You have to have phonic awareness. Students have had to have learned A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Bit of a waste of time, but it's, it's a very long process. This is why I don't do analytical so much. The kid has to know the whole alphabet and all the names of all the letters in advance. You, you, you kind of wasted a golden opportunity there. After the kid, your student, your child knows this schwa sound in there, you then start practicing short vowels. I said, I probably do this way any better. At, all right? That's the beginning of actual phonics. Stage one is not phonics, it's phonic awareness. Real phonics are when you're blending. That's what real phonics is. With synthetic, you do that almost immediately after your first two letters. But with analytical, not the same. After students have learned, then, then the, the, the stage two, the short vowels, often introduces uh, word families. At, 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 ag, ag. And we'll talk about that in a minute. After they've mastered that, that CVC rule, consonant, vowel, consonant, pan, cat, pin, you then learn long vowels. It used to be, in this, it's often called the magic E. The way that p -i -n is pin, but P-I-N-E is pine. The it becomes I. So our vowels are a, e, i, o, u, short, and long, A, E, I, O, U, which is also the name of it. I don't teach the magic E rule anymore because I don't do analytical, I do synthetic. After you've done that, step four is consonant blends or consonant clusters. Cl, pl, fr, cl, ap, clap, fr, in, fring. It doesn't matter, you can make up nonsense words. Um, you've noticed that three and four can be swapped around, but that's not, it depends on the book you buy, it doesn't really matter. And then finally at the end, it's letter combinations or what we, we call digress and diphthongs. Um, and in this, you also need to have a, a unit or a, an ongoing stream of sight words, words that don't adhere to phonic awareness principles. Okay, let me give you a very quick example of that. Here's an example of how you teach the ACT family. I have a bunch of videos of this on YouTube because I used to teach this a lot more. You find some of my older videos when I look a lot younger. I had a lot less grey in my beard back when I did this one. So you would teach the student ACT, ACT their phonic awareness at you would then ask them to bring those closer together at at you would then review all the initial sounds you do all the initial sounds right so you've just done your vowel consonant at 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 you would then review your initial consonant b k f Ha, ma, ha, ra, sa. That's with a schwa sound for anybody that's rushing to comment. You've added an incorrect sound. That's how they do it. And you then practice getting the at chunk, the phone, that sound as one sound, at, at. You would then practice adding b, at, b, at, bat, k, at, cat, f, at, fat. And as you're doing that, you would be introducing them to the images. So the student is picking up new vocabulary as you're going through this content, all right? And it just like, so you do the at, you know, you have that one sound now, you introduce the initial consonant, k, at, k, at. If you go to my YouTube, you'll find uh, phonics stage two videos. There's a bunch of them, all right? I'm not gonna spend too long on this today. That's not today's video. This is just giving you a basic understanding the difference so you have more knowledge when making your decisions how to teach your student all right your child whoever it is you're teaching there are bunches of these word families the at app am ag et en egg in og op ug 
and you go. You'll notice if you do phonics, your students have a better pronunciation and a better accent because we're hitting those final sounds better. A lot of non-native English people often miss off the final hard consonant sound. Yeah. Okay. And you teach them all the same way. B, ag, bag, ag, gag, r, ag, rag, t, ag, tag, w, ag, rag. And you do the same for all groups. Uh, one of the issues with this is that um, it does encourage more guessing. Students are more likely to guess the answer. So, for example, well, I, I've experienced this a lot in the past. The kid, the student knows we're learning the at sound. And you go like, k, at, and they go, mat. They just guess. They're not actually synthesizing the sound, They're analyzing the sound, k, at, cat. But when you ask them to do it, at speed or naturally, they all often just miss and um, miss here. I just guess. They know it's one of five or six words and they'll guess. With, with synthetic and jolly phonics, more importantly, there's none of that. The, the skill is actual genuine. They're actually blending the word together. Okay, like I said, if you want to find a bunch of my videos, these are some older ones. As I said, I look a lot younger in them. And uh, enjoy yourself. But that's not today. Today we're going to look at jolly phonics because it's what I am I'm more of a fan of at the moment. It's used in the UK, or it has been used in the UK, uh, to teach native speaking students. And it's synthetic, not analytical. Uh, before you get into the details of this, just make sure that your, your student or the learner you're working with understands letter, four, uh, letter formations, which, which are in the gra grass, sky, and ground. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, common errors where students are entering primary and that they're already misunderstanding all, all the letters are the same size, or they're mixing capitals and lowercase. On, on the subject of capitals, I don't worry about it at kindergarten level. When you're four or five years old, don't worry about capitals. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on your student's age and how they're holding their pencil. Make sure that their fingers are holding it in the correct way. It really depends on their age. Oh, well, I'm not going to go into this. You can pause the video and see yourself. And that's obviously the ultimate goal, the tripod grip. So you, by the time they're entering primary one or kindergarten three, they should be able to hold the pen correctly. First skill that you need to focus on before we learn anything with your student, first lesson, first day, first session together, let's play a game. Let's do sound counting, not letter counting. Yeah, we're not counting letters. Yeah, we're counting sounds, big difference. All right, so in the word cat, it's not C-A-T, it's cat. And you would say to your student, how many sounds in the word cat? If I say cat, at. How many can you hear? Let's clap it out. K -at. How many? K -at. That's right, there's three. Well done. What about the word car? Now, if you're a letter counter, you're going to say three. And you'd be wrong. Yeah? The word car only has k -ah, k -ah. How many sounds are you hearing? K -ah, k -ah. Two. <clears throat> because AR right, is in the digraph diphthongs, it, it's a single sound. All right, it's a diagram, it's a single, two letters making a single sound. It doesn't matter that your student doesn't know these letters. We're practicing your ears, all right? It's really good to get your receptive, your receiving skills down first. That always comes, reading and listening comes before speaking and writing normally, always. And right now, it's kind of like when you learn a new language yourself as an adult, you, it takes you a bunch of months to get your ears to understand individual sounds, right? When I was learning to speak Thai, it took me months to really train my ears to realize I was hearing separate sounds. So it's ka, ka. And just get your student, your kid, any age, from two and a half, three up, just get them playing a game. It's not lessing, not learning, right? It's, it's a game for them. You're having a game. And what about this one? Mm can you tell me now? M -u -n. M -u -n. Yeah, three. Don't even look at the letters really when you're listening. Just listen. Don't even show your kid the word. Say the word. Count it out with them. Clap it out with them. Don't worry about pen, paper, and visuals. It's you and them. All right. If anything, show them a picture. That would be great because you're increasing their vo uh, vocabulary knowledge. Uh, teacher is a hard one. I wonder who can do that one. Pause the video real quick. See if you can figure out how many sounds in the word teacher. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll, actually, I'll tell you now, of course, it's t, e, t, er. Now, what I didn't want you to do was look at the letters. There's a T and an EA and a C, H, and an E, and we know they go together. Listen, t, e, t, er, t, 
teacher, 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 yeah? And then here you go, you can pause the video, see if you can figure out these 10 words, all right? I'm presuming you've paused the video and looked. If not, fine, I'll show you anyway. All right, P I, sp, it. See, a lot of people get confused here. This SP, okay, is not a digraph or a diphthong. This here is a consonant cluster, and it makes two sounds, sp, sp, sp. Now, uh, in the country I live in, they have to go sap it, sap it, sap it, because they can't, it's not in their language to mix these two letters like that, to blend them. But when you do phonics, the kids don't do that. They know it's a straight sound, sp, sp, and they can do it. It's easier for youngsters, all right? <laughs> Next one, st, ill, double L, single sound. That comes later as a rule. But oat, w, it. Okay, the E is silent. That's why you don't need to show your kid the word. You show them a picture of the word and count out the sounds they're hearing. Okay, good. Now, as I said, I wouldn't necessarily do it this way with children. This is for adults. I'm showing you how to do it. This is how I do it with a kid. That's us. Well, first of all, I'd actually say, hello, do you know what picture number one is? You ask if the kid knows, because maybe your student already has that language, right? Maybe that's great. And you can say, what picture is this? What picture is this? What is that? And they're going to say, than, than, and you're going to go, yeah, how many sounds in the word s, uh, n, s, uh, n, s, un, s, uh, n. And if they don't click straight away, you do it with them. S, uh, n, s, uh, n. How many sounds is that? That's right. It's three. S, uh, n. What about the word snail? S, n, ale. S, p, i, d, er. E-R of spider is a single sound, not two. It's not spider, spider, it's spider, er, E-R. That's an a, er, o, o, w, one sound, o. It's not arrow, arrow, it's arrow, t, e, d, e, all right? F, l, ow, er. Yep, okay, good. Just so we all understand that this skill is sound counting, not letter counting, all right? Good, practice that, do that every day, all the time. I even do it with my primary kids with big words. We play a game, how many sounds can you hear? Just to keep their skills real sharp. Do that, that's a great way to begin any phonic awareness course. So, next question is, the reason I don't, pref I don't like to use analytical as much anymore is because of this. How many sounds in the English alphabet, in the English language, sorry. Now don't, if you've said, if you've just gone and said 26, you didn't read the question. It doesn't say how many letters in the English language. How many sounds are in the English language? And it turns out almost the same as most other languages in the world, over 44. And I know in the Thai alphabet, there's 44 consonants, 33 vowels, but it makes roughly the same number of initial sounds, all right? People that are maybe doubting that, have a look at this. This is basically the the main 40 plus sounds. In addition to that, you also have to be aware that there are alternative spellings, right? That's quite important too. So for example, this one here, these are all A, right? These are all O, these are all R, I, U, E, Ow. Er, I. Okay, you don't have to be an expert on this, don't worry. It's just giving you guys the knowledge to help you move forward, all right? Jolly Phonics teaches these 44 sounds in a very specific order. They're broken down into seven groups of roughly six sounds each. Group number two has seven letters because two of them have the same sound, the k sound. There's no difference. I'm not going to go through all the sounds of the alphabet for you, okay? You can look at my other videos for that. But Jolly Phonics teaches group one, s, a, t, s, i, p, n. Mm. Mm. Why? Any ideas? Any ideas? Any ideas? If you're watching at home, pause the video, have a conversation with anybody that knows, you know, who's watching this with you. All right? If not, I'll show you now. With the first six letters of the normal alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, 
at buttcut.fuck with the analytical sounds in it. You can only make a bunch of small words. You can't really do too many three letter words with that or too many decodable words. You're very limited with that. However, with at ip, the most six of the most common letters of the English uh, sounds of the English language, you can basically initially like with group one, you can immediately read about what's like 30 something sounds, right? 30 something words. You immediately start reading with Jolly Phonics. You don't wait till you've got 26 letters and names and written forms in your head. You get six sounds, six images, and you immediately start reading. Much more success, much faster. When you do group two, you've suddenly added another 60 words to your lexicon. So you've now got 90 words and you're only a couple of weeks into this or a couple of months into this, depending on your speed. By the time you've done group three, you're off, you're going. There's just no stopping you now. Your kid is very phonically aware at this point. All right, with Jolly Phonics, that's a very, very specific procedure. It's very specific and, it's, and then this helps. As long as you've done the work and the research, you've done the learning and you've planned your lesson. If you're homeschooling, please do plan your lessons like a teacher. Think of an introduction. If you don't know how to plan a lesson, please go to my video on lesson planning. If you're homeschooling, you need to act like a professional teacher. You, your kid will respond better to that with good technique, all right? So what we're gonna do is the procedure is, I'm gonna tell a story. In that story, there's gonna be a sound. I'm then gonna connect an action to that sound. We're gonna sing a song using that sound and that action. I'm then going to teach you how to form that letter or that sound as a picture. We never refer to the name. And then I'm going to check, can you hear that sound in other words? Now, the reason we're doing this is you're connecting audio, visual, and kinesthetic learning. Audio learning is listening. You're hearing a sound. You're hearing a story. You're hearing a song. The visual, you're looking at the image. You're looking at the letter shape. And kinesthetic, physical. You're making an action that you can connect that sound to. That is gonna make the brain not remember, learn. Okay, the more ways you can approach any new content in life, the more ways, the more connections you can make between this new piece of knowledge and your life and your experience and your body and your memories, the better and the deeper your brain is going to absorb it, the deeper it's gonna go into your knowledge. All right, it's not the same as going cut at cat or cut at cat, m at mat. That's rote. Even though it's better than C A T cat, that's terrible. Don't do that. C A T cat's a really bad idea. If the very least you should be doing is k at k at cat, m at. Okay, but this is actual learning, not memorization. Every single letter you do, every single session you have, should I say, you need to make sure. But when you're teaching the new sound, you've got the letter sound, the letter formation, you immediately start blending that letter with old letters you've already learned. Don't wait. You do a letter at a time. You're not trying to teach your kid 30 letters, or, sorry, 30 sounds, or 10 letters, or anything like that. One letter, or one sound per session. Add that to your previous knowledge, and review your previous knowledge. That's the blending. That's the most important part. Is the blending then identifying that sound in another word is it there or not are you genuinely listening to it and after you've done the first three groups you move on to tricky words we're not going to talk about that too much today tricky words are basically what we used to call sight words words that don't follow phonically procedure for example the word he he if you read that phonically phonically it would be he, he. and it doesn't say he it says he why because it's a tricky word and you point at the word and say, tricky word, you can't trick me. And that's a great little chant to help your kids. And you put them on a tricky words wall. And you work through them every day as a, as, as a review. All right. Let me show you exactly what I'm referring to. Oh, before that, let's talk about letter formation first. It's really important that your students do not fudge the letter. What I mean is I see a lot of students that write P like this. They do a line down, they stop, and they do another line across. Or they'll do A like this, they'll do a line down, and then we'll do a circle around like that. That's not how you do C, uh, A. And C, they'll often, in Asia, they'll start at the bottom and come up. Um, that's not okay. I suppose I could show you it here. Because later on, that's gonna have a massive effect, all right? You'll see this sometimes for A, or for P. 
Now, the way it's being formed is incorrect. That's not going to help later on. How later on are you going to be able to actually have handwriting? Right? How are you going to be? And I say sometimes they begin at the bottom and come up. They get it the wrong way around. So right at the beginning, get this right. Get this right from the beginning. Because it's going to help with handwriting later on, your cursive. It's going to also, when we're talking about audio, visual, kinesthetic. Yeah. So when I'm, for example, writing out the, the, the word, uh, the, the sound A, A. Yeah. I will chant as I do it. Around, up and down. Around, up and down. Or if I'm doing t, 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 high, high, high in the sky. You remember? Sky, ground, grass, ground. High, high, high in the sky. Down, across. Off a pa, pa, pa. It's down, down, down in the ground. Up, around. And you try it in one motion. All right? Down, down, down in the ground. Up, around. Now, what you've probably not observed me doing just now is I'm actually doing air writing with you guys. You're looking at my camera, right? So I'm actually writing in reverse. Around, up, and down. Okay, I hope that to you looks like an app. I don't, I don't have any comments here. I'm not, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter. But what I mean is I am actually writing in mirror. So when you look at me, it's the correct way. That's a difficult skill. That needs practicing overtly. You need to practice that yourself. Um, the other reason is when your kids are having difficulties with it, you raise your left hand looking at your child. So you're not overpowering the child by coming over from behind. You're looking at your child. You can ask your child to raise their hand they write with, normally the right hand, but if it's a lefty, it doesn't matter. But if your child writes with their right hand, you use your left hand so you can hold their fingers with them. And you can do the action with them then. Around, sorry, sorry. Around, up and down. You are writing it backwards. That's a skill. That's something that needs practicing. That's not very easy, I have to be honest. Now, let's go into it real quick. Oh, I think that audio came off already. Never mind. Now, let's have a look real quick. So, let's go through that procedure. Who remembers the procedure? Story. Sound, song, letter formation, identifying the sound in a word, right? Okay, let's be very clear about that. So let's do it. I'm gonna show you how I do it with the student. Okay, so last Saturday, Susie and me went for some sandwiches in the park. It was so much fun. Oh, it was so much fun. We had such a good time. We also ate some strawberries. Oh, I love strawberries. But then Susie said, JJ, help, help. I can hear something in the grass. Something in the grass. Something going s, 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 s. And it was a, it was a, yes, it was a snake. That's right. It was a snake in the grass. What I'm not doing is s, s, snake, s, s, snake. We're not doing that. We're not attaching it to the word or the name of the letter. I'm letting the child deduct the sound. Snake, that's right. There was a snake in the grass. The snake is in the car. And me and Susie decided we were going to do this to show you our little snake. And we're going to do, we decided we were going to sing a song. The song is The snake is in the grass. The snake is in the grass. The snake is in the grass. Can you do that for me? The snake is in the grass, the snake is in the grass, sss, sss, the snake is in the grass. If you do not speak English at home, meaning your child is not an already fluent speaker, you can do the story in your own language. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really have a judgment on that because if you don't speak English fluently at home, that's going to be challenging. But if you do, great. But also, if your child is not yet fluent at speaking English, uh, they might just do this, and they, they, they just mimic the sounds, which is fine to begin with, but make sure you get that bit. Okay? Then we're going to practice writing it. Now, obviously, I need to do this backwards, okay? So it looks forwards to my student. So I'm writing the letter backwards here for me. And the way we teach the student is over, under, under, over, under, under. Little chant. You might then practice that. 
If your child's quite young, don't worry too much about actually writing the letter. Just get them saying it and knowing it. We'll talk more about that in a minute. If you do need them to write at a young age, buy a big crayon. Don't forget the hand grip and the age. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna find out, can you hear that word? So look at picture number one. That is a s -a -n, s -a -n. Can you hear s in that? S -a -n. You can, that's great. Number two is a snail, snail, snail. Can you hear s? You can, that's good. Picture number three is a flower, 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 flower. Can you hear You can't? Well done. And the last one is a spider. Spider. You can. Well done. That's it. That would be your lesson. You'd sit down, you play a song, you do some games with your kid, you might then um, play some games showing them pictures and ask them to slap with a fly sword or point to things that, are, that, that, that have that sound in them. And that would be it. You would then put your new words in picture form on the wall of your bedroom or of your learning room or wherever you are. Okay, that's it. I'll just be very briefly for you, okay, just to give you a couple more examples. The next one is, ah, ah, ah. So, so, so there's Anthony and Annie, and they were eating an apple in the park, and, and Annie said to Anthony, ah, ah, Anthony, Anthony, ah, ah, ah. there's an ah, 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 ant on my arm, ah, ah, ants on my arm, causing me alarm. Ah, ah, ah. And we decided to do that as a song. And we all decided to play at having a, a, ants on my arm. And the song we sang, a, a, ants on my arm, a, a, ants on my arm, causing me a laugh. Ah. That's it. And the way you do the letter A is around, up and down, around, up and down. Make your own stories up, make your own scripts and your own chants up. Or you can buy the Jolly Phonics Handbook and there's some advice in that. We're now going to play the song, of course. Ah, ah, and so my arm. Ah, ah, and so my arm. Ah, ah, and so my arm, they're causing me alarm. Okay. Now, can you tell me if the first word is a s s spider? Spider. Can you hear an at sound? You can't. Well done. Picture number two is an a r o an a r o. Can you hear this? You can, great. A n t n t. You do? Yeah, apple. Excellent. And that's basically it. But then the next thing is you, you now have two letters in your hand. Immediately start blending. So let's go, guys. S a s a s a. We've just read a word. Doesn't need to have a meaning though. Or we could go a s a s a s. Well done. You're blending. High five. Two points. Okay. We then do. Tennis match. I'm not going to do all of this for you now, but then we're blending now. We've only done three letters and we're already on to a CVC word. S -a -t. And you can go S -a -t. It's for tennis. That's the tennis one for t -t -t -t. I haven't, This video is going to be too long if I go through every sound. This is just how to do it. You can go onto Google, you can find out each action for through each sound, okay? It takes a bit more training than just watching a quick YouTube video, I'm afraid. Okay, if there really is a lot of need and if this video does get a lot of hits, I will go ahead and do a full hour on all of the sounds and actions, but it, it, it doesn't, you know, I'm not going to do it if, if there's no need for it. Okay, so the idea is as quickly as possible, your child is reading. Okay, the first six letters are s at, mm -hmm. right? And then by now, you've only done, if you're doing a letter a day, or you're doing one day, uh, two letters in two days, and a third day review. Two letters in two days, a third day review, keep doing that. This is literally a couple of weeks, right? I would then probably start getting my students to read these words. I mean, there's a bunch of them now, all right? After you've done the first three groups, you then get told that two letters can make a single sound, and it's not a, it, it's a, a. This is a diagram. Ain. And that one's A, A. I'm not going to do all this. I haven't got time. This one. Oh, oh no, there's a goat under an oak tree. And said the boy with his boat and his coat. Yeah, it's kind of ideas. All right. And there's I. Okay, here's a brief explanation of where I feel you should be aiming for. All right, uh, in kindergarten one, about three years old, just focus on the first three groups. Don't stress about it too much. Don't worry about too much writing. Their muscles are not ready. 
okay? In Kellyan Kindergarten 2, like four years old, all the groups, all the words, reading full words and writing practice. And by Kindergarten 3, before they're in primary, about six years old, five, six years old, they should know all 44 sounds, including digraphs, diphthongs. They should be able to dictate full sentences at that point. I'm going to get into more detail later in another video and you can find a nice little app. Once your kid's done this program, this product, over a couple of years, uh, you can probably look at Jolly Grammar. All right, guys, I hope that was useful for everybody. I have a feeling someone's about to bang on my office door, so I better stop recording. Have a good fun, good luck. Please like, subscribe, share, etc., etc. Please do your best for me to help. And I'll, if I feel that people are responding to this video, I'll go ahead and do something more depth. That was a lot of talking. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.